Hello and welcome to another edition of Coffee Talk with immigration attorney Brian D. Lerner. Um, in this particular episode, we're doing Coffee Talk on a train. I'm coming back from Seattle. So I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the perception people have when filling out immigration petitions and the reality as to what might happen if it's done wrong. Uh, the the fact is is that a lot of people believe that it's you know no problem uh, filling out immigration forms. It's just uh, it's just a matter of checking boxes or putting in um, you know uh, the biographical information that there would be no problems if you know uh, this or that wasn't done correctly no ramifications no issues and I'm here to tell you that that's not the case well certainly there are people out there that have successfully you know uh, filled out petitions or natural applications uh, relatively easy is because people try to do it themselves. Now, rather than just telling you uh, that it's better to get, you know, a professional to uh, either, you know, do your naturalization or your assessment or your base petition or, you know, myriad of uh, other things, I just want to give you some examples of what has occurred uh, in the past um, you know, and what I've seen uh, with various things that I had to do in order to uh, resolve uh, situations that weren't done properly. Okay, let's just start with the naturalization. Um, uh, I had a client come in, and, and I'm using a representative client, but it's happened multiple times. Um, you know, I had a client that came in, uh, filled out the naturalization application, and, you know, of course, it was at the time of the interview. Um, the the officer says, you know, have you ever been convicted? And of course, the client said no. And then, you know, when they ask that, they're not asking that to be friendly. They have the rap sheet in front of them, okay? Uh, and so, after writes a thing saying, well, there's certain arrests that we see here and here, and we want you to give the uh, what happened. Well. It turns out that uh, this client not only got denied because of the crimes that had been committed, but now had the extra charge of fraud and misrepresentation um, because it clearly states on the naturalization application, you know, have you ever been arrested? Have you ever been convicted? And, you know, when all this supposedly occurred. So when you say no, to everything, um, and then the officer additionally asks you. Sorry, the the train's going up and down. Uh, additionally, the officer asks you, uh, "What uh, crimes of any have you ever been convicted of?" And you say, "None," um, or that you've not been arrested. You have two counts of misrepresentation. One is telling an officer flat out you've never been arrested or convicted uh, when you have and two marking no to the answers on the naturalization form now when I inquired uh, with this client uh, the client had the various crimes expunged and thought that in fact he didn't have any convictions um, when in actuality that's incorrect Expungement does not erase a conviction for immigration purposes. The sad part about it is that as the crimes were over five years old that and were not considered aggravated felonies, that it would have been a uh, very good chance of the naturalization going through in order to uh, you know get this person a citizenship. Well, it turns out that, you know, I ended up making a motion to reopen, showing uh, through declarations and so forth that the client, uh, number one, didn't really understand the questions that were on the naturalization uh, application regarding this, and secondly, that, 
you know, he thought uh, truthfully that he had no convictions because it was expunged. Um, you know, so uh, ultimately the case was reopened, had to uh, refile and then uh, go from there and ultimately he did get naturalization. But that was after a lot of work and a lot of time which wasn't necessary. So this is one example and again you can think of uh, having an attorney do the naturalization application as insurance okay or the adjustment application as insurance um, because you don't mark one little thing and it can go on and bite you in the rear later okay so let me give another example um, you know there was and again I want to clarify that I've had Client do this. Okay, it's not just one. I'm just condensing them into you know single examples. So, in in this particular one, um, <clears throat> the person was trying to bring in uh, his daughter. Okay, and it turns out that years later or before, when he was petitioned, um, he did not mark that he had a daughter okay and uh, when I asked him why he didn't mark that he said well he wasn't ready to bring her in and you know first he has to establish himself and then he has to you know get some money and so forth and so later when he had established himself um, and tried to petition her they of course saw that in the original I-130 petition and the I-130 is a relatively simple form but in there he didn't list that he had any kids so naturally what they thought was trying to uh, put one over on immigration and petition a kid to come to the United States that was not his so uh, you know he tried to answer the request for evidence it was denied and all that and then you know he comes into my office and uh, so again I had to do various motions to get it back on track to explain why it wasn't properly uh, and put it in the first place. I got the uh, DNA tests from both this side and the side where the daughter was. Uh, of course, I had to show legitimation. There was issues uh, re regarding even if he was the biological father, whether or not the petition would go through. Uh, so we, uh, you know, put all that through, and eventually, about two years later, it did come out. But that's two years of heartache. I mean, can you imagine not being? Uh, together with your child for two years when you know had you marked a simple little uh, box uh, and and put the name of the child that would have avoided all of this issues so you know these are these are a couple representative uh, things that have happened over the years um, you know the the reality is is that immigration is like a you know, hundred thousand piece puzzle, and you put one piece of the puzzle in. You have to see how it affects everything else. And for those people who do not know or do not have any idea, you know, about the puzzle, they're only looking at one little piece. Um, they just don't understand all the ramifications that can occur from not properly filling out a form, or uh, perhaps in some of the documents I've seen um, for example some consular processing documents um, the person just flat out smoking marijuana um, and the whole case was denied and you know there needs to be waivers done and all that um, of course I'm not advocating to lie or misrepresent to to immigration but to flat out admit to a possession of marijuana um, when there's no conviction, no arrest, no anything, uh, you know, that, that certainly can cause a lot of problems. So, you know, if you like the video, go ahead and uh, click uh, subscribe and like and so forth. I usually put out new videos about once a week. Uh, this particular one hopefully will get you to uh, get a professional um, to help you with your immigration application. Uh, and more on the coming videos.